I get asked this question a lot. Do you have any tips to help improve my photography? And I always answer, no. Just kidding. Hey yo, my name is Matt and today we are going to be looking at light painting. I have another video that mentions this, but this will be a little bit different. First, let's break down what light painting is. It's a technique where you use a long exposure on your camera to capture light. A common example of this is with a sparkler at night when you're trying to make a little heart or spell your name or something. You take the picture while they're doing that and then the final picture has the actual image of the heart or the name or whatever. So how do you achieve it? Like what's actually going on? Well, what's happening is the shutter on your camera is staying open for a long time. So whatever the light touches, that's what shows up in the image. In the case of the sparkler, the sparkler is coming out. That's what the light is hitting. It's the act you're actually seeing the light. So I've seen people use this for lightning effects or other kind of explosion effects. And in case you're not sure what the shutter speed is, it's this number on your camera. Most of the time you're probably shooting faster than a second, like 1 60th, 1 100th, 1 250th of a second. The shutter speed opens and closes that fast. So it's like, it's usually less than a second, like right? And when you hear like the burst, it's like like those are all like shutter speeds going up and down. So to get a long exposure, we're going to be using a second or longer shutter speed. So you're going to click it, it's going to remain open for at least a second and then it closes. It is possible to do this without a tripod, but I definitely recommend doing this with one or at least the camera like on the ground where it's stable just to limit any movements and get the sharpest image possible. We're not gonna be making hearts with this, but here are a few recent images that I've taken where I use this technique. For all these, I had the shutter speed set at one second. So I'm gonna turn off this big light and take a test photo to see what we have. What's cool about this technique is that you just need one light. My goal when doing this is to start on one side and then wave it to the other. It can be the backlight as well as the key light with the right motion. In these shots, I did use a second light to help with the background, but that was just a choice, not necessary. I know you're wondering why I do this instead of setting up lights like a normal person. Well, focusing on toy photography, I feel like it really helps make the light softer overall. So with these plastic figures, it can make them look more real. When setting up the shot, I'll shine the light like this to nail the focus first. So what you're doing is with your shutter speed at one second or two seconds, you're clicking it, it's gonna be open. And so after you click it, you're going to pass the light from one side to the other. And so it's gonna be like click, one, two, boom. It might be a little dark, but you're gonna edit it and you're gonna make it pop. So take a few shots, try different angles, try different intensities, use the viewfinder to see what's too bright or not. It's not perfect, but it should be a good gauge and just overall experiment. I know not all cameras are made the same, but the viewfinder should still show a good idea of what the lighting will look like. So if it's too bright, then maybe your light is too bright or maybe the shutter speed is too long. I do try to keep the ISO at 100 for the cleanest image and usually have the other number, the aperture, between f5 and f9, just to keep most of it in focus. So taking a few more pics with the different light passes, this is the one that I like the most. And after some quick editing, boom. So whether it's with a flashlight or the light on your phone or an actual LED light, try this technique out. Experiment with different lights and intensity and angles and make some art. Go create and inspire. Peace.